It was only a matter of a few hours until we all fell in love with the island. And despite we are here to shoot a short film about the sharks and the invasive lionfish, we will also focus a little bit on the island above the water. We are staying with Janice and Elle from Ocean Fox, who are wonderful people. And since they live on the island for quite some time, Elle is the perfect guy to explain a little bit about why Eleuthera has a special place in so many people's heart. So Eleuthera is one of the out islands, I mean it's on the easternmost part of the Bahamas platform. So if you were to get in a small boat and leave Eleuthera headed east, the next place you'd run into is Africa. Well, the island is totally unique from a whole bunch of different perspectives. First, there's the beaches. You have miles and miles of beautiful, deserted beaches with nobody on them. And everyone's unique and different. And there's still some beaches we haven't been to on this island. The island's 110 miles north-south. Most of the roads you just get on and drive down, find a beach, wander around, go looking for sea glass. So the beaches are just world class with nobody on them. when you're on the Atlantic side looking out it's deep blues. The Caribbean side is shallow all the way over to Nassau which is 50 or 60 miles to the west. It's anywhere from several feet to 20 or maybe 25 feet deep at the max. The colors are lighter because of the white sand reflects. The water is somewhat noticeably different in terms of temperature because on the Atlantic side you've got deep ocean water which is cooler all the time. And on the Caribbean side, it's shallower, so it will heat up a little bit. Then you've got the flowers. The flowers bloom 365 days a year. You know, back in Texas, you get them in the spring and that's kind of it. Here, we've got flowers year round. It's just incredible. Then you have fresh fish if you want them from the fishermen in town or you can do your own fishing. People here are friendly. Um, so when you drive down the road, people will wave. They're always waving at you. They may not know you. They may know if you're a tourist, you're in a car with a white license plate with green letters which means it's a rental car and so they know to watch out for you because you may forget to drive on the left so they're but they're all friendly and after you've been here for a while everybody kind of knows you they wave or honk or whatever so the people are just great it's practically no crime you never get to the point where it seems normal it's always special 
for example, the sunsets, they're unique. It's a, it's a picture that's painted every night, and we usually start watching the sunset from about a half an hour before sunset to a half hour after sunset. As the sun goes down over the horizon, you get the clouds get backlit with different colors. Stars at night, there's no ambient light, so you can lay out and just see stars like you haven't seen since you were a kid if you grew up in the country somewhere. It's paradise. Redefined. Paradise redefined. There, there probably aren't any ordinary days, but if, so, so if we're going diving, I usually get up around 5.30, check the weather, have coffee, check Facebook, check emails, respond to emails, download the paper electronically, read the paper, when it starts to get light, you might move outside and sit here on the porch and just enjoy the breeze, just kind of hang around and get ready, wake up and get ready to go. small boutique dive shop. We'll take a maximum of eight divers out at a time. Uh, I've got Daryl, who's my full-time employee, he's a dive master and boat captain. I'm an instructor. We like small groups. We like to provide a personal level of service that you almost can't get anywhere else. Um, so we're not really in a hurry. We outfit your equipment. We set it all up, put it all on the boat, take you out there help you get in and out of the water. We get back to the dock, you get off the boat, and we take care of everything else. But most divers, if they're lucky, get to dive once a year for a couple of days. So if I take you to a dive site and you don't get back on the boat and go, wow, that was incredible, then we didn't do a good job. The idea is just to make sure everybody has a good time, enjoys themselves, and hopefully they want to come back and spend more time on a Luther.
there's several things that, that make the diving special in my opinion. First of all, we rarely see another dive boat. Well, there might be the little local fisherman in his 12-foot boat with his little 10 horsepower motor out trying to catch some lobster or some snapper or whatever. But beyond that, there are no boats. None of the dive sites have any trash on them. In the three and a half years I've been down here, I've picked up one beer can, and that's it. Photography is, is just world-class opportunities because the water is clear and you have so much marine life. formations are excellent. We have on, for example, Blackbeard's Treasure Hole. There are 34 species of hard coral on that reef. There's probably somewhere between 6 and 10 species of soft coral and probably 8 to 10 species of sponges. So you get to see what a real Caribbean reef looks like. The coral is very much alive, vibrant, and growing. We have uh, several boiling holes. The boiling holes are unique because the water gets pushed under the island from the tide difference from one side of the island to the other. So twice a day you have cold, clean water coming up under the island and that's what the coral really likes. Then as far as the variety of dives go, we have a beautiful wall. We have miles and miles of wall that we haven't even dove yet. So we're still finding new dive sites several a year. Each one's different. A lot of swim-throughs. Um, the wall is, is relatively vertical. You go over it. If you haven't done a wall dive, you swim out. You're looking out at the deep blue when you go down and look down. Because usually the wall will drop off to six or 800 feet before it gradually moves out deeper. So you look over the wall and all you can see is deep blue. You don't see anything else. So the wall is incredible. So the conditions are just perfect for us to work on our projects. There is nobody else around, the visibility is great and we have enough time to plan everything we are doing. Now, most of the time we spend diving on Thick Finger Reef. That's one of the dive sites where you can find plenty of Caribbean reef sharks and they are really reliable here. That means every time we jump into the water they're already waiting for us. Being around sharks in the water is just great because you can interact directly with them. If you see a shark while diving, it's most certainly already the beginning of an interaction because the shark doesn't show up just coincidentally. The shark realized that there is something unusual in the water long before we even see them. And there is so much to observe about shark behavior when they send out all kinds of different signals. For example, a completely relaxed shark tends to have his mouth slightly open. And in a normal situation, the shark is 50% shy and 50% curious at the same time. And he will approach slowly to check you out. And if you stay calm, he might get close enough for you to clearly see the eyes. And that's a special moment because realizing that the shark actually looks at you generates a connection that keeps the shark coming back over and over again. Scientists found out that sharks can tell the difference between the back and the front of a diver even 
when the head of the diver is not underwater. It is not clear how sharks can do that. All we know is that the sharks have a completely different pattern of approaching a diver from the front than they have from the back. From behind, they come much, much closer. The main purpose of this trip is to interact with the sharks, um, but also to shine a light on the issue of the invasive lionfish that causes intense trouble on the reefs. When Al first told us that the sharks turned out to be somewhat helpful in getting rid of the overpopulating lionfish, we decided to shoot a short film about that. But step by step, let Al first explain about it. The lionfish showed up 10 to 20 years ago here in the Caribbean. They have no predators, so they are just populate. They eat the baby reef fish. So when we go out on the dive sites and clean them out, those we'll usually keep and eat. But if we're at a dive site that involves sharks, or if there are sharks in the vicinity, then you always have to remember the shark's job is to get whatever's injured, wounded, or dead off the reef. So once you shoot the lionfish, if the shark is there, it's best to give the shark the lionfish, because he's going to get him one way or the other. And if you don't give it to him, he might get a piece of you. So we're feeding the lionfish to the sharks when they're around because that's their job to consume them. So we're just doing our thing to keep the reef safe, help the population of the reef, and keep the divers safe. For the short film, which we will name Shark and Lion, uh, we would have to get footage of sharks feeding on lionfish and that's not easy to get. So the plan is to shoot with six cameras at the same time. Two GoPros on tripods and then Al, Maze, Micha and I also have a camera. And the shooting always follows the same concept. There is the, the wall and the sand and we're shooting towards the sand. Keep the corals in the back. Yeah. Like if you don't have anything else yeah. coming from behind. No big deal. <laughs> Once we go down, Daryl takes off to find a lionfish and there is no way the lionfish can hide from him. We call him the deadliest predator of the seven seas because he grew up spearfishing and so his instincts are outstanding. So once he spots a lionfish, he rings his bell so that we can set up the cameras somewhere close to him. Because it's very important to drop the lionfish shortly after he speared it. Because the sharks can sense a dead or wounded fish and would try to get it immediately. So Daryl has just about 20 seconds to drop the lionfish right in front of our cameras. I mean, it's crazy how many lionfish you see around here, and they seem to be fat and lazy. I remember when I first saw them back in the 90s in the Red Sea, I was fascinated by their spines. But seeing them around here is a completely different story. There is no other recommendation than to take them out. And that's what we're gonna do together with the sharks. It's interesting to see how the behavior of the shark changes once there is food in the water. They completely lose shyness and get 100% curious, checking out the divers and swim around really close. And that's when the fun part starts. There's 
only one situation that might get a little bit tricky. And that's when two sharks are competing for only one lionfish. The sharks will forget about everything and just try to find the lionfish first. They will bump into everything, not caring about anything. So it's best to stay a little bit off and to make sure that the lionfish doesn't hide in your pocket. In the end, we had great fun teaming up with the sharks. After two weeks, we got used to each other and could already distinguish one shark from another. And they all have their own personalities. For example, the small one with the black eyes is always a bit more curious than the others. And this naughty guy knocked our cameras over and over again. Okay, we have all the underwater footage of the sharks feeding on the lionfish. So all we need to make the short movie complete is all the scenes above the water. And to be honest, we didn't really know how it will turn out in the end, but we were optimistic as always and ready to give it a try. The location is somewhere in the Schooner Keys, a few small islands surrounded by very shallow water, right off the southern tip of Eleuthera. I don't want to tell too much about it, but the story will be about a guy walking out in the flat sea collecting shells and eventually he steps on a lionfish, gets unconscious, floats away and then the sharks come in. First and most important is the shot how Michael actually steps on the lionfish. And to be able to get that we would have to catch a lionfish alive and bring it there. Which Daryl managed perfectly. Just a lionfish coming off? Yes, yeah, we just need a GoPro and mask. That's it. Pour him out. If we pour him out, will he disappear? We don't know. <laughs> no. I can find out right now. I've never done this before. <laughs> Sink him! He's sitting right there. You got a good shot. You got a good shot. Yes! Yes, you got a good shot. Bingo. Watch out, watch out. He right in the camera. Can you give me the stick? <laughs> give me the stick. <laughs> the lionfish shot was the first one we did and it went incredible. So that was probably the biggest relief there was because we that could have taken all day. Great footwork. And the best one. Yeah. That's it. If we're done, it's perfect. Ja, ich finde, zum einen ist es sehr trüb, dann ist es scheiß Wetter, es ist ein bisschen kühl und ich finde auch, dass das Wasser irgendwie keine schöne Farbe hat. Also. Uh, it seems like the wind is picking up again. Do you see any clouds around? Try to fly the drone, we do it.
Sonnencreme. Der bringt die Fresse weg. And then the weather starts to change and I'm looking over there. There's a water spout. Of course, all the cameras were pointing in the other direction. They didn't get the water spout, but they got the color change. And then here comes the lightning and the thunder. And I think Florian even captured that on film. Gas blitz. You couldn't have scripted it any better. I mean, from the weather, we had all the whole spectrum of weather that you could ask for for filming. And then it clears off and it's flat calm and out of, the, out of nowhere come the noceums. These are little insects we have over here. Some people call them sand flies. It's basically a small set of wings with nothing but big set of teeth. And then the most annoying things on the earth. And we're out half a football field from the shoreline and here they come. Just attacking us. So we're all down in the water. You can see as our heads up like this, trying to holding cameras up, trying to survive. And then the breeze finally picks up and they sort of go away. <laughs> Everybody had fun, and you know we we give Florian trouble about uh, okay, dead guy in the water, take 27. How, how can you take 27 shots with a dead guy in the water? But anyway. Perfect. Nochmal. Perfect. Nochmal. Perfect. Nochmal. Okay. Nochmal. Das war ganz schlecht, Maike. Das war wirklich diesmal was echt schlecht. Komm, lauf! Reicht, reicht, reicht! Ich will dazu regnen! Ja, den, ich brauche die Tom Lasch, ich tüte! Komm! Hey! Regnen! <lacht> It gets to be fun. Because most of us are not in the movies. And uh, having the director tell you all the stuff you need to do all day long is kind of fun. As long as you got a really good sense of humor. <lacht> Das sieht ja gar nichts. Äh, Warte mal die Augen auf. Das geht echt nicht. Die sind ja total rot unterlaufen. 
Warum machst du das sowas? Ja. Two weeks goes by really fast when you have the caliper of people that we have over here doing photography and diving and doing the shark dives and a lot of experimental things. It's just as, as I said the other night at dinner, it gives me a chance to do the fun things rather than do the things that we do all the time. It's just one of those memories you don't forget. It was a lot of fun. I mean, it was tremendously fun. Uh, great guys, great time. It's so few guys get to do what I got to do. It's a uh, I'm really a lucky guy to be able to have friends like this. Neutral Island, Neutral Island, here we come. Here we come, here we come. Neutral Island, Neutral Island, here we come. Here we come, here we come. There's lots of lovely one, but I'm gonna get me one. We go to lose we come to lose 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 I'll to love me one I'm gonna get me one We come to lose We go to lose We come to lose We go to lose We come to lose We go to lose We come to lose We lose, 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 we lose,